Okay, so today we are looking at OpenSUSE 12.1. Now I'm going to be taking a look at both KDE 4 and GNOME 3 desktops, but I want to first discuss what OpenSUSE is all about and the uh, differentiations that distinguish it from all of the other vast myriad of Linux operating systems that are out there. So first of all, OpenSUSE uh, used to be a sub, uh, like a subset, a division of Novell. Novell was responsible for, was the company really behind the SUSE Linux Enterprise desktop, uh, a commercially produced product. And OpenSUSE was like the open source uh, community version, if you will, of that distribution. It is geared towards the enterprise, but really uh, OpenSUSE tries to be a distribution that is, uh, that is capable of doing most everyday user tasks. Tasks. So really the infrastructure that OpenSUSE has backing it and uh, and, the, and the huge amount of tools that they have developed in-house over many years of development really put OpenSUSE at a very favorable position, especially in, uh, in the current Linux community where there is a bit of back and forth about what distributions are going to work well for some people. So first of all, OpenSUSE 12.1 does ship with a number of nice enhancements since the last release. Uh, of course, we've got all the up-to-date software, including the Linux kernel 3.1. We've got KDE 4.7 as your uh, as the default desktop. Although you do get uh, GNOME and you can get LXD XFC as well, they haven't really uh, uh, undergone any major releases since the last release. So, but you do have the latest releases or more or less of uh, KDE and GNOME. Uh, so we are at 4.7 for KDE and GNOME 3.2 for GNOME. Uh, now, as far as the uh, as far as changes on the desktop is concerned, there isn't a whole lot. You still get the same basic software that you always have. Uh, most KDE tools will come by default, except for the system administration. So, if we go here into configure desktop, this will uh, personalize all of your desktop settings. So, all the stuff that is personal to you to your desktop logged in session, uh, you'll be able to change through here. Anything to do with the administrator is handled through YAST, which is the open source a custom uh, administration tools which have been developed over a long, long time. Uh, now these tools, as I've mentioned before in other OpenSUSE reviews, uh, this is really what where OpenSUSE's strong point is. And what I like to see, uh, what I what I really like to see in OpenSUSE is the fact that they uh, they don't revamp this uh, this tool set. They just keep building and making it better, expanding functionality and uh, and just building things into it, which uh, which the Linux as a core system is capable of doing. But they just give it a nice GUI front end for the people that want to manage their systems well. They can do so without having to dive into the terminal. Having said that, of course, there are terminal tools there, just like every other Linux distribution, but it is very nice and very convenient to have these administrator tools uh, built into the desktop and very easy to manage. Uh, it is worth mentioning, however, that they do have a very uh, a very comprehensive terminal utility that you can use if you're uh, on like a headless server or something like that. Uh, that it actually does look very similar to the uh, to the GUI here, and it is actually uh, I have used it once or twice in system recovery and things of that nature, especially if X11 starts decides to go all funky at you. Um, now, one thing that I want to talk about in particular is Snapper. Snapper is a new feature that they've added in here to the YAST administration tools. Basically, what Snapper is, is it finally takes advantage of the snapshot uh, abilities of the BTRFS or ButterFS file system. Now, file systems, of course, are basically the way that a data is laid down on your hard drive. Uh, most Windows, it is N NTFS, as most of you would know. Mac OS X has its own thing. And Linux, for a long time, has been EXT4. Uh, that's been the standard. Uh, now, Whereas but, uh, ButterFS has now uh, come into a bit of maturity, and now we ha even have a GUI to be able to take advantage of those snapshotting utilities. So you can see here all the changes that I've made to this system over the last couple of days I've been using it. And then you can also see uh, the description of those changes and uh, how they were made, what type of changes they are. Basically, I can come in here, uh, come to any change in particular that I want, double click it, and you can see here the exact files that were changed as a result of the, of the, uh, of the changes that you made. And then you can simply select those files and click restore, and it'll wind back the system to that state in time. This is a fantastic tool, especially from the fact that you can manage this from a terminal. So even if your entire system goes crazy, you can still recover from a terminal and, and roll that install back to the, to the place where it was working perfectly. So this is a fantastic tool and uh, well done on the OpenSUSE 
Massachusetts team for finally capitalizing on ButterFS. Now, of course, just like Fedora and most of the other enterprise uh, class distributions, we do have uh, all of the cloud computing, uh, you do have all the cloud computing libraries that you need, and all of that stuff is all ready and fun and ready to go. As far as software management is concerned, uh, again, it's, it's Previously, software management on OpenSUSE has been a bit of a bugbear for me. Um, nowadays, it's still not as comfortable, as convenient, as nice as something like Ubuntu Software Center, but it certainly is leaps and bounds ahead technically. Uh, the, the technology that powers the software management of OpenSUSE is really quite advanced. You have, Q, uh, you have CURL or curl on the, on the back end that helps uh, with multi-threaded downloads, so you do get nice speedy downloads on the, on the, on the most part. Um, you also have a vast array of repositories available to you inside the package manager. You don't really have to go outside uh, what, is, what, is, what is offered inside the software management. Basically, what you can do here is you go to configuration repositories. Then from here, you can select, uh, you can add repositories. You can see all the ones that I've got here. But basically, you can come in here and add repositories based on the community. So you select community repositories. It'll download a re list of repositories from the internet if it can indeed connect. And then you can simply select those repositories from a list. And for instance, you just enable Pac-Man and the libdvdcws. Uh, repositories and you've got simple inroads to pretty much every software you could ever want or need. Now the other nice thing that ties directly into this is the OpenSUSE build service. OpenSUSE build service is basically a set, uh, uh, it's basically infrastructure to help developers push out the packages that they want. Uh, so basically it's just a community driven repository that is constantly updated with the latest software and extra applications that the standard OpenSUSE repos don't provide. It's really good to see that OpenSUSE is embracing the community and making it incredibly easy to add third party repositories. Now also, it is worth mentioning that you can get a rolling release through OpenSUSE. A simple repository change from the 12.1 release to Tumbleweed, which is the code name for their rolling release, and you will have a system that automatically updates itself and keeps itself uh, rolling with all the latest packages that are stable and tested by the OpenSUSE desktop team. So that is a, a, a again, that was something that came with 11.4, but it is a very welcome addition here in 12.1 as well. Uh, and it can be noted that if you have been using Tumbleweed, you're practically up to up to date with what OpenSUSE 12.1 offers, bar maybe the artwork that you can pull down from uh, one of the build services. Overall, there's a lot of technical stuff that I love about OpenSUSE's package management. It's uh, it's so it's so much more powerful and so much more adaptable, scalable than uh, what a lot of other distributions uh, are offering at the moment. I'm especially looking at you, Fedora. So although it might not be the easiest thing for new users to get a hold of, I think with the with the excellent documentation that they do provide, uh, I think this is definitely, a, a, the, the, it has the potential to be a first class package manager. At least on the technical side, it's got all of the technology and all of the power to do everything you could want to do in a package manager. However, it's just that the GUI is a little bit awkward at this stage and it could do with a bit of spit and polish. Uh, now, of course, there have been rumors about using an Ubuntu Software Center-like interface across most distributions just to make it a bit easier. But at this stage, uh, as far as installing packages con is concerned, probably one of the easiest things is uh, patterns. You can come in here and install different patterns, and they're like meta packages of, uh, of the stuff that you'd want. So, for instance, if you want uh, Qt4 development libraries, you just click that box, and it will automatically download and give you a list of all the packages you could ever want or need for Qt development. Development. Same goes with Ruby or Python or whatever else you want or KDE development or file servers, whatever whatever meta package you want, you just come in here and click it, install, you are ready to go. The download speeds are very fast and, uh, and also the package management installing has been very respectable as well, which leads us on to system performance. Uh, the system performance of OpenSUSE 12.1 is... I would say that this distribution is a little bit heavier than other other distributions I've tried. Um, although, I mean, I am using the ButterFS file system, which may be having a bit of an impact on the boot speed, because the boot speed is a fair bit slower than most other distributions. However, once you start using it, you don't notice the difference. Um, it, the, the system is still very responsive and um, 
pretty happy with it as far as that is concerned. Applications launch, uh, application launch speed is fairly respectable, but sometimes you do get a bit of lag here and there, and I'm not sure whether to put that down to the ButterFS file system. Uh, in my experience, it's been fine with ext4, but if you do want that rollback and snapshotting ability, then you are going to have to go with ButterFS. Again, this is only on a, uh, on a 5400 RPM drive. It's not on an SSD or anything fantastic. So your mileage is going to vary here. Otherwise, I haven't had any stability issues whatsoever. OpenSUSE has been rock solid stable as per usual. And now let's just jump over quickly to the GNOME boat and see what's going on over there. So of course we know what GNOME 3 looks like by now, so I'm not going to spend too much time looking at this desktop, but it is nice to see uh, just a stock standard uh, implementation of GNOME 3 that is polished and of course it brings all the GNOME apps with it. So we do have Banshee as your uh, default media player, we do have Shotwell as your photo manager, which is an interesting replacement from FSpot, which has been uh, the, the OpenSUSE choice in the past. But of course, FSpot now is getting a bit dormant, so that's that. Uh, now, as you can see, one comment that I do here ha have about GNOME 3 is the stock GNOME icons obviously don't cover all the KDE stuff. So if you have both desktops installed, like I have here, the KDE applications just look horrible in that they don't even have icons. So that is a bit of a knock on the GNOME side of things. Uh, it, vice versa, it does, they do respect, KDE does respect GNOME's icons, but it doesn't seem to be working yet at this stage in GNOME. Uh, now, of course, we all know how this works. We've seen it before. It's meta key, type what you want to launch and enter and you've launched it. Um, again, responsiveness seems to be seems to be there. As far as graphical effects go, it isn't quite as snappy as what I noticed with Fedora. Uh, and as far as on the KDE side, you do have the OpenGL, uh, the new rendering libraries that they've included in uh, KDE's KWIN compositing manager now. So the the effects can be pretty smooth, but on the on the odd occasion you will get a little gra graphical glitch. At least that's using the open source AMD graphics uh, drivers. Uh, again, the proprietary drivers for OpenSUSE are available. Uh, they, most people have, uh, have success doing it through the uh, package manager, which they do have instructions for on their website. Their website, of course, is worth mentioning because of the fact it is uh, what makes OpenSUSE as good as it is. Now, one comment that I will make is that it would have been nice to see a bit of customization on the theme side of things. Um, I really feel like the standard GNOME 3 theme is okay, but it gets old pretty quick. Uh, not to mention that the blue doesn't really blend in with the green that well. Now, of course, theming GNOME 3 can be a bit of a pain uh, if you don't know what you're doing. However, I think they do, in, uh, they do include the advanced GNOME tweak tool by default, so you can uh, change the settings of fonts and different shell extensions you can also manage through here, just like you can on any other GNOME 3 distribution. So again, as far as actual technology is concerned, OpenSUSE is a very, very, very polished release and it is capable of big things. Um, they've really, they've really made an effort to connect the technology that's available in Linux to the desktop. And that's why I feel it is, it is definitely a better distribution than uh, what Fedora is currently offering in that Fedora does provide a lot of nice, uh, uh, technological advancements in their distributions, but it's not really stuff that the everyday user is going to use or even care about. Uh, however, OpenSUSE really implements stuff that is relevant. Uh, they give GUI tools that, uh, people can at least learn to use. Not only that, they can provide, uh, they also provide some fantastic documentation on, uh, on how these various GUIs can be used. And usually what will happen is that the, there will be a, a formal manual that will be produced for every single OpenSUSE release. And it'll give you a full breakdown of YAS to the different desktop environments, package management, all of that fun stuff will all be managed through, uh, through their manuals. Of course, they do have their community, their forums and their mailing lists and all that fun stuff. So my concluding thoughts about OpenSUSE 12.1 is it is a welcome release. They've done some fantastic work here. This is the first time that OpenSUSE has released under its own independent banner. In and that it is not being backed by, uh, Novell anymore. It is its own, it is its own beast. And now I think it's under Attachmate, but it's under the, uh, it's under the SUSE subdivision of Attachmate, therefore it has a lot more independence and it has a lot more community input. And I really feel they've listened and they've polished hard in this eight month release cycle. It's a lot less stress than the six month that uh, that Ubuntu goes through and a lot of other distributions. Um, it is, it does feel polished, definitely. There are a few rough spots, especially in the GNOME release, but as far as the KDE is concerned, I mean really it's hard to find a better KDE implementation. As a distribution, OpenSUSE definitely 
takes the cake as far as out of the box what you can do with this system. It's very scalable, it's very adaptable and its administrator tools have been second to none for quite some time now. So for those who want to give OpenSUSE a go, I would definitely recommend it to those who either want to learn how Linux works and what it's capable of, or those who have toyed around with Linux for some time. Not for the absolute noob, as you do need to know a little bit what you're doing. Having said that, OpenSUSE was the first serious Linux distribution that I tried after Linux Mint, and I honestly think that OpenSUSE taught me the most about how Linux works and how it runs. So if you're a power user of Windows and you, and you know your way around a a particular system, I do recommend you give this one a try because it will teach you a lot. It's a stable system, but it's capable of so much. So well done on the OpenSUSE team, and I look forward to seeing what kind of polish these guys have for Linux technologies in the future. Once again, thank you guys for watching. I will be having more videos coming up very shortly of uh, all sorts of different Ubuntu derivatives that are struggling to uh, to adapt to the new GNOME shell environment, uh, including Luna Linux. I don't know how you say it, but it's an OS X uh, mock-up. And we also have Ping iOS and we have the Linux Mint with the uh, Mint GNOME Shell extensions, which I will be looking at in the very near future. Thanks again so much for watching. Please subscribe if you would like to receive these kind of videos on a regular basis and give that thumbs up button some love if indeed you did like the video. And with that, I will bid you farewell.